Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Best Ball Bash. JWB Fantasy Football's home for everything best ball. Sponsored by Underdog Fantasy, the best place to play best ball. If you sign up to Underdog today, you can get a $100 first-time deposit match if you use code JWB. Tonight, we are drafting Best Ball Mania 4. I am Wyatt, your host, and today I am joined by my friend, Brad the Bandit. So stay tuned. I'm sad I talked about Miko because I feel like people are now in the chat and people are talking about me and Miko. I'm not here for it, okay? <laughs> I actually have a, an unfortunate amount of any picket exposure so far. And it makes no sense to me. Like, why do people hate him right now? Is it because he played injured? I mean, anyway, I wouldn't be happy if you tell me you want to draft Jameson Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Bandit in full regalia. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, Wyatt. I think we have to draft more Kenny Pinkett and more Miko Hardman. I think that's what I've learned. <laughs> yeah, just draft base off the intro video. <laughs> yes. I Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, Miko, I've been doing some research back into, you know, about 2018, 2019. He's had some good weeks there. A couple, you know, top 12 finishes. So with he, Rodgers. He's definitely, he's definitely better than one of those classic better and best ball players. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he absolutely <laughs> is. But all right, this is going to be my second Best Ball Mania 4. I have not been out in these Best Ball Mania streets yet. Uh, I just did one the day it opened. Uh, mm -hmm. As we are wont to do, we had to do it as soon as it opened. <laughs> had to smash a draft. But uh, I took four quarterbacks, and then I was promptly destroyed by people in the Discord. Uh, for taking <laughs> four quarterbacks, that's a no-no. So. Were, they, were they all at the end of the draft? Uh, yeah, I waited, 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 and then my first quarterback was Kyler Murray. So, okay, that's why I ended up with four. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I probably uh, probably still max out at three on that, but you know, yeah, you, you learn. <laughs> I know. Yeah, uh, I, I've done better in the puppies, and uh, you know, I I really like doing just a standard twelve person draft where you don't have to worry about week seventeen and just get the <laughs> high score. You know, so been doing those yeah. two. Um, yeah, but you know, when Best Ball Mania first opens, it's interesting how many drafts you actually want to do as it first opens because you don't have as good of a chance as having a full team of live players going into the season when you draft really early like that. You get closing line value on players. Uh, you also miss out on plenty of players just because of injuries, all, all lots of things that can happen. So there's nothing really wrong with only have done, having done one Best Ball Mania at this point. Like, I, I, did like four immediately and then basically have stopped outside of this stream. Oh man. Number five. Uh, and I know you've mentioned that, uh, you're a late round or a late slot guy. So am I, we're going to yeah. get 10, 11 or 12 Always here. Guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. I will. This will be the time that we get one on one. All right. Jettas. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. On that, on that why don't we, why don't we just jump right in? All right. Fire it up. Hopefully we get a, a quick fill here. Yeah, I hate having to wait for this. I mean, it's usually usually pretty pretty good about feeling quick. Yeah, what are we at? How many uh, how many do we, we, have, we have in there right four now? Four left to go. Four okay. So, what do you think about this um, this starting board? Because, like you're saying, uh, you want to have live players, and obviously, like everybody's wide receiver hungry. But mm -hmm. do you think wide receivers are even higher than they will be in June, July, August? Just because better chance that they will be live uh, come playoff time than, you know, if you're going to risk it with Jonathan Taylor, maybe take Devontae Adams or maybe take both because they play in week 17. But uh, <laughs> yeah, who knows? Uh, it's an interesting question. I'm not sure if that will have an impact or not, because I think even though, you know, you run a higher risk of not having a, the running back you draft by the time the season comes around, um, the value is still really highly for those running backs. I know we got with the 106, which is still not that right. high, but it's not the back half. Okay. Um, that puts Ooh. us, you know, maybe Cooper Cup, Travis Kelsey, Bijan, Stefan Diggs. Depends on how you're feeling in there, too. I'm going to yeah. take a quick, uh, quick look at this, see if I see any names I recognize. Chuck Bass, I recognize that name. Oh, Chucky. <laughs> this uh, guy sucks. <laughs> that's the only name I'm recognizing. That I've seen plenty of time. So uh it's be interesting. Yeah. Um, so I have a quick question before this actually gets on the clock and rolling. Uh and we'll be picking here in about three minutes or less. But um so okay, so Travis Kelsey, say that's our pick. Mm -hmm. Now, 
is it getting too galaxy brain to be like, if Mahomes is there in the second, I think I know where do we going. do we automatically take him or do we pivot because there will be so many Mahomes Kelsey teams if everything goes well and you get to week seventeen. I've been toying with this idea of purposely not taking the quarterback in the second round. Yeah. Um, especially since I've been drafting late in the round and it's been like a lot of AJ Brown or Stefan Diggs or whatever, whoever uh, yeah. purposely passing on the QB one because it possibly gets a different kind of configuration for the draft slot. But two, if you're in a room where enough people are like, I don't want to do the round two quarterback, especially because they don't have the stacking piece. Will they fall to the third and you get to end up in a, in a great spot because of it? Yeah. And have you noticed since the, the schedule has been released, it does seem like more and more guys will fall just because people are trying to force those week 17 stacks there. Yeah. They're... I think it definitely will happen. Yeah. So we'll... As, as people lean more into, I'm picking like two teams and just trying to find their bring backs and things like that. Uh, we are up. Are you a Cooper Cup, Travis Kelsey? Would do you have a particular lean here? Um, I would lean Kelsey because I'm not sure Matthew Stafford's actually going to play this year. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a valid concern. Yeah, uh, the injuries are tough. I think the retirement reports, concerns, all that kind of stuff, at least had some validity to them. I know that like Matthew Stafford's saying he's raring to go, but yeah, he's th- going to be 35. Injuries piling up. That team does not look very good. No. Um, so he also has 50 million reasons why not to retire. So very true. <laughs> I think, I think he would, I would probably... definitely not retire if I was. No, <laughs> nope. I think he might be on the roster. He might, uh, you know, he might start week one or start a little bit, but it really could be Stetson Bennett's season in week 17. And I, I'm kind of toying with the fact of, okay, Jalen Ramsey's already gone. Bobby Wagner was there. Now he's back in Seattle. Are they going to let, Aaron Donald or Cooper Cup go chase a ring somewhere I and just do a full I, reset. I, th- I think that's one of those things when you say it out loud, it can sound a little crazy at first. But then yeah. you think about how bad that team kind of looks on paper in the division they're in. I mean, the Cardinals are bad, but yeah. San Francisco we know is very good. Seattle looks very good. If the Rams are 2-7, and seven, are they letting Matthew Stafford finish out the season? No, like, do they have a reason to other than pride for Stafford? <laughs> like, I don't know, you know? Yep. They're, those are questions you have to ask about the the Rams this year, I think. And I think it, it makes a lot of sense, too, because, yes, the Cardinals are very bad um, or are going to be very bad, but they have a quarterback. So it's like, OK, yeah. they could be the number one overall pick. Vegas surely thinks they're going to be that, but. Maybe the Rams want to be really bad because they could just move up a slot or two to get Caleb mm-hmm. Williams and just reset. So yeah, uh, we're Wyatt, about, it looks yep, like yeah, yeah are we, we're going to be gonna faced. Are we going to pass on Mahomes and try and shoot the moon? I don't know who who else <laughs> would you take. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's probably Tony Pollard for me if if we pass. Yeah, Tony Pollard or T Higgins would be that week seven. I'll let stack, you make the call we... on this though. Um, do you have many Mahomes Kelsey teams? I'm guessing so. you've got some. Yeah. Do you have any BBM teams with it? I think so. Cause I would I would say uh I would We're say Mahomes. Pollard, Pollard all right. Because <laughs> I was go gonna it. say Alave. So if we were oh, okay. Mah- yeah. But all right. Uh, Pollard, so Pollard I think is like actually a value right now even though he's still climbing because i i don't think he's done climbing i think he's going to be a fringe first round pick by the end of the summer i do too and if we wind this back to uh our sicko february drafts when everything started opening up remember getting tony powered at like in the fourth round yeah. that's not happening again <laughs> also lamar jackson just went before jalen hurts and patrick mahomes yeah 50 million reasons why we only have to fade that was to what? Chucky too. Chuck Bass. What's Chuck team? got going on? What What's his team look like? Lamar and Tyreek. Okay, so he's got that Week 17 thing in mind. Baltimore yeah. plays okay, Miami. There goes Mahomes to. There's value picking. Can't blame mm-hmm. him. No. 
Well, this oh, okay. <laughs> the, yeah, Sadunu got J Jeff too. So <laughs> we may I have, have seen that. We, we might be feeding the eventual best ball mania winner right here. I've seen that a couple times. So uh, there no, will be okay. a couple teams like that. All right. So uh, we definitely want to you... target a Cincinnati player at some point, though, if we can, to try and go with Kelsey, probably. You know, hopefully those two are the two that matter the most in week 17. For that game. Yeah. Yeah. And not to be a Debbie Downer, but I mean, Chase has not played a full season yet. So Higgins, Higgins could be the guy. He could be the the alpha that week. We're, we're a pick away from Higgins. I mean, that do you like uh, him more than Alave just for stacking purposes? I don't. I mean, like, I like Alave in a vacuum much more. I do too. Uh, yeah, it is actually a decision, and they're both there, of course. Of course, <laughs> we can always take. Could get Joey Burrow. Later. I'm kidding. Don't take Burrow. We could. <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, we could take Higgins here and see if Burrow comes to us. The yo-yo man dropping by. What's up, buddy? My cat for the listener. He's uh, he's joined the stream. He wants to make a pick. Who do you think? I'm. We're gonna let Wyatt pick. Okay. Yes. We're we're gonna we're gonna take T Higgins and hope that Burrow comes back to us. Which I think there's a chance. So Wyatt, I got to. Uh, we got to get to this now okay. because uh, we are in a dynasty league together, and it, we have some <laughs> very contentious chats between. Me and some of the JMO fans and you. <laughs> yeah. And now that we have Tony Pollard, uh, JMO's looking nice at his current <sighs> ADP. What do you think? Can we make it like we, round 10? I'm saying. Can we make it Sam Laporta instead? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the beef with JMO, man? I mean, I know it's really brutal because he's out six weeks. The, the Lions have their buy in week nine. So it's kind of like he doesn't even, he gets back from suspension and then immediately is out. Uh, so like it's it's pretty brutal, but you know, by week seventeen, <laughs> not gonna lie to you, I have some exposure to Jameson Williams in best ball. Good, good. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I just I was a little bit lower than consensus on him as a prospect coming in. Um, I. I've talked about this at length and I've gotten roasted plenty of times by saying that I think you at least have to pause and think about his end of season. If not just attribute it 100% to injury, just, just think about it. I don't know. I'm not saying what it was. Uh, I'm just saying like, it should give you at least a little bit of pause, but during all of that, he's continued to climb up in ADP in every league. And yeah. that just didn't make any sense. I mean, he came down a little bit with the suspension, but it just didn't oh. make sense to me that he should continue to rise as much as he did. And we, we get, got, uh, it's not technically a snipe because it is ADP, but it hurts to see Joe Burrow yeah. go right there. Joe Burrow is gone. Joey Burr. All right. Okay. Back on the clock. Do you like anything here? This is like the ugliest section of the draft to me. Uh, you know, I, I think we should maybe do a double tap with wide receivers before it gets grim. Um, yeah. I have, so, I'm inclined to agree. So I guess um, seven seconds. You know, I would take Drake London, maybe. I don't have an issue there. All right. Uh, because I, like I think London. I think maybe we could get DJ Moore on the comeback in a game where people uh, think that that will be a run fest. But I, I've got a little bit of faith in uh, Arthur Smith this year to actually do things just based on some articles in The Athletic. Um it was basically saying that when Arthur Smith was hired, he talked to the owner there um, and they were like, this is going to be a process. It's going to be a multi-year process. It's going to take mm -hmm. some time. And apparently they're there now, which I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so with, uh, oh, there goes DJ Moore. Anyways, yeah. um, I'll, another I'll guy I really like. Oh, go for it. Go, no, go ahead. You finish your thought. Well, I, I was just going to, Pivot to uh, Christian Kirk, who I think Love it. should be ta should be taken over uh, Calvin, Calvin Ridley. Ridley. But, yeah, yeah, I agree. Up oh, there, and there he goes. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop starring <laughs> people. Uh, <laughs> so, no, I was gonna say about the Falcons. Like you have to think about also when Arthur Smith's offenses were humming the most with Tennessee, that play action game that they had, uh, getting into the and just getting into the playmakers. Ryan Tannehill wasn't doing anything special per se. Like he played well. 
but mm -hmm. he was mostly you know, like it, it, it was a wasn't a very many read offense. There was you know a lot of handing off to Derrick Henry, play action here, you know, crossing out there. Uh, yeah, not not too complicated. And like you, I'd like to think Ritter could do that. He was accurate last year. They just didn't have him pass very much. Uh, yeah, I think I think Ritter's here. capable. Um, all right, so a lot of guys we probably wanted are gone. Um, I like Michael think? Pittman still. Yeah, it opens us up to Anthony Richardson later. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Do we have a, a quick trivia? Who do the Colts play in Week Seventeen? The Raiders. All right. So what could we get maybe later on? Uh, you know who I've been targeting in the last round? Maybe too much is uh, Zamir White. Okay. Just because he was behind uh, Josh Jacobs all last year. Josh Jacobs had a number of carries that when you look at the data for the past decade plus or so, mm -hmm. it doesn't look good for him, you know, repeating as RB1. Or, you know, necessarily being at 100% for all 17 weeks. So I just think that mm -hmm. Samir White was taken by that regime uh, for a reason. He kind of looks like the back who could, you know, actually assume that workload. And if Josh McDaniels is one of the few coaches who is like, nope, we're going to have a guy carry it 30 times a game, um, he could yeah. be a pretty good option. Well, and I think... Uh... Josh Jacobs might have spoiled their plans a bit. You know, they didn't take on the fifth year option for his contract. They declined it. And then they drafted Zamir White in the fourth round, granted. But I'm sure when they did that, they were thinking like he could do it. Like we're taking him because we think he's good. Like maybe he yeah. turns out to be something. And then Josh Jacobs went out and lit the world on fire and then they kind of forced their hand. Yeah. So it'll be, but he only got a, didn't Jacobs only get franchise tagged? Did he? I don't know if he signed it, but or did he sign a deal? An extra, uh, franchise uh, a tag. Okay, because I know Saquon. I don't think he has signed his franchise tag, and I I yeah. doubt Joe Shane will uh, actually give him a long term deal mm -hmm. just based on what they did with the Bills. But here we're here we're coming back up on the clock. What do, what are you mm -hmm. thinking here? You got some another options. tough part. Um, it's nice having Kelsey, Sanders. really. It is really nice having Kelsey because, like, Goddard's yeah. one of those guys who might have a couple of weeks. But uh. all right, so I'm, my vote would probably be for Miles Sanders. Yeah, I, I like Miles Sanders, and then that opens up some Jags stacks later on too. Um, right. All right. So we got Tony Pollard and Miles Sanders. Those are two backs. Uh, let's talk about it, because last time I was on JWB, it was on the Dynast Dynasty Digest back mm -hmm. in the fall. Um, you don't have to listen to our thoughts about Christian Watson, but we did <laughs> talk about DeAndre Swift, and my, how yeah. the tables have turned uh, for Swift. I remember, yeah. I think, uh, not to blow up Skylar's spot, but <laughs> I think it was something like, I was saying we could down tier from Swift to Pollard. And he's like, yeah, for, but Pollard in a first. And now it's kind of flipped completely, which is crazy. But the it's, point I'm trying to crazy. get to is like Miles Sanders is now in Carolina and he has Swift's old running back coach there um, who we saw in hard knocks last year in Detroit. And he was always pissed off at Deandre Swift because he didn't have that dog in him or whatever. <laughs> uh, so I think, you know, Miles Sanders has that, dog in him and he will uh i think he'll be really really strong uh for this team there's a guy here i know we both love so marquis brown you... yes okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> easy peasy this is just like until uh like do you know what the definition of closing line value is because i i don't i know it's one of those terms that just it's in sure. the best ball circles now and the gamble and i'm like yeah, yeah so... closing line value <laughs> Uh, we draft Mark. Let's say okay. We'll I'll use Marquise Brown as an example right now since we just drafted. We drafted him at seventy eight. Let's say that uh, when drafting ends, his ADP is uh, sixty. He moved up. We got eighteen spots of closing line value. I think we will. <laughs> I really do. Um, I think we will. And it also works the other way, obviously too. Yeah, I I just I think 
it will only go up. It's it's crazy to me that he's still so far down. I know that the issue is Kyler's health um, and Kyler might not play and everything. And you can also liken this back to what we were saying about Matthew Stafford. But it's just like if DeAndre Hopkins is gone, these two guys right here that were at the top of the, the board um, were Marquise Brown and Traylon Burks. Both mm-hmm. should have plenty of targets. You and think? Both – yeah, and they both can kind of get those manufactured targets where just get their ball in their hands and let them do what they do best, which you got the speed for Hollywood and then hopefully the yak ability, just kind of bruising ability of Traylon Burks, but we'll see. We did get sniped on Anthony Richardson. Yeah, I, I had that in the... We're losing the quarterbacks to go with the players we're drafting. Uh, mm. Obviously, Kyler is an option, though... It's a it's a risky option. Uh, we can draft Ritter, but that's definitely not someone we want to rely on. Maybe as a QB two, but so something we got to be thinking about. Yeah. All right. Um, Back on the four, clock. Yeah, four wide receivers, two running backs. Kelsey. I mean, it looks good. Really... We just don't have a ton of correlation yet. Yeah, not a ton. Um, I don't know. What are you leaning here? I, I would say not Dak. Not a Dak fan? No. Uh, I'd be leaning towards James Conner, but don't feel great about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, like, uh, I like James Conner at his ADP. We actually got a little bit of a discount on the ADP. It's just our team makeup. I didn't want to have to take a running back there. No. But no, but uh, Michael Thomas, Cortland Sutton, I'm not into Rashad Bateman. I have a little bit of faith in, but losing it. Um, so I guess what do we want to we want to talk about the quarterbacks? Because I can't stand Kirk Cousins as a person, but as a quarterback, <laughs> he's probably going to be top twelve. So uh, yeah, I mean, I like Cousins. Cousins a good man. So yeah, they play uh, Minnesota in week or they play green bay in uh week 17 but it could be jaron hall as the quarterback for the vikings who knows it could be jaron hall <laughs> i'm on just now. saying come on i'm now. just saying if things blow up it could happen i will say um, if if dak falls to our next pick i'm gonna sure. fight pretty hard to just take him there at adp yep. i can understand wanting to fade yeah i mean Probably we have tony it. pollard so that's that's nice it's just the Dak issue is not a talent issue for me. It's a Mike McCarthy issue. Yeah, and that's the only concern is how caveman-ish will he like to get with the offense? It seems pretty caveman-ish. <laughs> uh, can't wait for week six against uh, Kellen Moore in L.A. That's Oh, you know Kellen Moore is going to call a pass play on every single. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so good. <laughs> it's going to be so good. But, uh, you know, this is kind of the quarterback zone where we could – maybe get two and they'd be pretty, they'd probably be stronger than most people's. Uh, yeah. Two and, quarterbacks. I mean, um, with Dak, there's still potential options to go with him. Like you said, we also already have Pollard uh, two is hanging around, but his best people to pair with are long gone. gone. Uh, yep. Kirk Cousins. We like our best option after this would be KJ Osborne. Daniel Jones, all of, all of his wide receivers go after him, but that's because who who has a clue what's going to happen with any of them with that room? Yeah, so it gets starting to get tough. Has uh has Alexander Madison gone yet? He's he's been shooting up the board. Yeah, oh, I'm, so I'm we can get get. Positive. Should we just take Dak because we can yeah, get like a Brandon Cooks back, yeah. or uh, Michael Gallup and kind of yeah back it in there with we've already got uh you know James I'll, I'll Williams give you this. coming up next. <laughs> If Jamison Williams comes back to us, we'll take him. <laughs> All right. Week 17, baby. Because now I have a reason. I've got correlation <laughs> as a reason. Okay. But yeah, um, I think Madison's ADP is like in the 90s right now. I'm going to scroll back. Really? I, I think he, he went I at thought 88. He was, okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Ty Chandler? Um, I don't really have a lot of thoughts on him. I in a way that's like, like a last really round a, guy. I think it's kind of a non-factor I would say. Yeah. Uh, I think Dwayne McBride has a better chance of making an impact than Tyler Chandler does. They had some interesting things to say about him. I was listening to Scott Barrett on the fantasy points show 
uh, mm-hmm. talking about the things he took away from the watching press conferences afterwards and how they like made a point of bringing up Dwayne McBride when they, when he wasn't asked about and how they mentioned they think he can catch passes in the NFL better than what was shown in college, which, you know, that's a, a lot. A lot of coaches say that about a lot of running backs doesn't mean they're going to. But yeah, the fact that they were talking about him, I think, is a good sign. As it's, especially since it seems like Dalvin Cook is on his way out. I mean, I, sh- I say seems, but as I believe like the story right now is they're just waiting for him to pass a physical because they literally can't do anything with him until he passes the physical. Uh, and then yeah, because out of town, I think they. Th- I, it was probably just reported. I don't know if it was like the Minnesota Vikings team account. It was probably like a Schefter or a rap sheet or something that said like post June 1st designation. That's what's coming. Um, yeah. So he's basically already cut. He's probably already talking. Yeah. To and they could, and they could have already done that if he could pass a physical, but he got that. That's what it done is early in the off season. That's what it uh, is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're, we're a pick away from Jameson Williams. <laughs> yes, we are. And this person has five wide receivers. So, I think it's more likely they don't take him. <laughs> they did. Oh take him. my! God. <laughs> oh. They we're see. So we're gonna close. take Laporta from Laporte here. Their name is Laporte. We're gonna take Laporta <laughs> later. Right. Um, I think we should be taking Tyler Boyd here to go with Travis Kelsey. How do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, I'm down with it for sure. Okay, I was a little bit tempted by Gino there, since us like Me waiting to be a little bit to pair with Dak. Uh, I like Gino a lot, but I think it's important to try and get a piece, another piece in the in that game, that Week 17 game. I know we already have Higgins, but right, I want I want exposure to that game. Yeah, and you know, can we really count on Charlie Jones in the last round? Uh, he's like <laughs> yeah, the that's heir apparent like, or something, or this Chase is, Brown. At this point, it's like literally the last piece in the game you feel good about. Yeah, because who knows with the tight end Irv. Baker Smith there. He doesn't really stay healthy. So yeah. I don't know. Okay, so we're in a weird part of the draft. Um, where people are boosting Dalton Kincaid up to tight end eleven, which is insane. Absurd. And insane. He will, you know, a lot of people who draft him are gonna be really, really mad that he doesn't do anything for two months, but that's just how the bills operate. So <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> have to earn his playing time. That's what Sean McDermott does, but people just think he's going to be a big slot from day one, and it's, yeah. it's not going to happen. There he goes. And it was by a red badge. You should know better, red badge. <laughs> oh, but it's a discount on ADP, right? Because he went after ADP, so. Yeah. Nah. I'll pass. Looking... <laughs> nope. He'd have to drop a few rounds for me to want to take King Kate, I think. Yeah. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Zay Jones, we've got Carolina with Miles Sanders. Zay Jones works for correlation. Jacoby Myers works for correlation. To go so does Darnell Mooney. Yes, yes um, that is true. Uh, uh, I might say I just want to draft Jared Goff to uh, just yeah. have another QB I like. Agreed. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Because guess who they play? Our quarterback, yeah. Dak. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully that's, that's just shoot out and one of them is great <laughs> yes uh i do like a couple of these running backs though samaj p ryan and jamal mm-hmm. williams i do think um one guy i'm really worried about right there just okay so jamal williams is rb40 but rb44 is kendra miller i think kendra miller might get nuked in august just you know that seems like a backfield that if Alvin Kamara, his, uh, I think his court date is July 31st or something, like mm-hmm. right before the preseason. So if he gets a suspension handed down, don't they just seem like a Leonard Fournette kind of place? Like, we're going to bring in another guy, <laughs> yeah. you know, and Kendrick. Yeah, it would not it. surprise me if that was the case. Because, you know, with with um, just looking into like the advanced pass blocking third down stuff on pff alvin camaro was like abysmal like 20 in the 20s for his grade and jamal williams is like one of the best at pass blocking so he'll be back there with Derek carr on third down so that's just two snaps there or you know first and second down kendra miller maybe jamal williams probably i don't know what do you think about kendra um i I think he's a very good runner i yeah 
I still have like some concerns that he is just like a two down grinder and that's just what he'll be. Mm-hmm. But I think he's really good at that. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think that's another player who like the team afterwards said like, we think he can cut patch passes too. Or yeah. cut passes too. Uh, a lot of that hope going around. <laughs> yeah. There it's, it will always happen. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all right. Um, yeah. Back up on, on this. Uh, do you does anything stick out for you? Now I'm just thinking about week 17, pretty much. I, I do see Michael Gallup there, uh, just mm-hmm. to pair with Dak. Um, mm-hmm. Don't know how I'm good with you about. All right, yeah, because no, but I think he'll also just come back. So if there's anybody else you want, uh, that's fair. It, it, fair point. It, it's possible he would have. Um, He's just Truthfully, one of those guys this, where it's the just section like, of draft doesn't jump off the page for me, especially considering our current build. Mm-hmm. Uh, the players that like I kind of do like in this section are not players I want to take on our team. Like Russell Wilson, I thought was a pretty good pick for that point, but yeah, I have no interest in Russell Wilson at this point after getting Dak and Goff. Agreed. And we've kind of got a nice little balance here of. You know, we should be really, really strong at running back at the start of the year. So now, as long yeah. as they're healthy, you know, as long as they stay upright, I, I expect James Conner to be like a top five running back, basically, to start the season. I said it on uh, last week's show, over 17 half PPR points per game without Kyler Murray, over 20 opportunities a game without Kyler Murray. It, it yeah. And ever since he became a starter in Pittsburgh, he's been, you know, he showed that he can he's on the handle field, it. He's, getting it done. he's not particularly special, but he's no. like above average in all areas, which means he doesn't come off the field for teams, especially for teams we've seen like Pittsburgh and now the Cardinals who mm-hmm. kind of just feed running backs. So what do you, do you think uh, we're all right with um running backs, tight end? We're good. I mean, yeah, I mean, Yonta tight end will take another one at the end of the draft, but... Yeah. Uh, There's the Zeke lottery we can always do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you like uh, an Alec Pierce, uh, Nico Collins? I don't like mind Alec, Alec Pierce. Pierce would be the second wide receiver for in, from Indy without us yeah. having Anthony Richardson. I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, I'd probably be leaning Nico Collins. Nico? Okay. Okay. It's, it's the, the thesis to that, it's pretty easy. It's just He's probably the wide receiver one for his team. And yeah. a 13th round wide receiver one for his team is a bet that I'm just going to make more often than not. Agreed. And, you know, a lot of Titans are there late if we wanted to um, think about uh, Kyle Phillips, maybe, <laughs> or somebody like that. <laughs> I'd be more like uh, Tajay Spears if we're going to and we'll play the maybe Derrick Henry doesn't make it through the season. Yeah, maybe he gets traded. Maybe they go full reset there. Oh, we got one of my favorite guys coming up, but we just took a Houston guy. I don't know if we want to take another. Devin Singletary, Mr. Uh, Mr. Is Unremarkable. That, is that just because he's a former Bill? It's uh, definitely part of it. I think, <laughs> you know, in the next couple of years, I want to have the the level of intel I have about the Bills in my brain that I do about, you know, at least half the the teams in the league that would be great i think discord will really help there just you know i've got a lot of buddies who are diehard seahawks fans you're a diehard browns fan there's so many browns fans on twitter and Bengals. it feels like all that information is so tight and reliable so with singletary for for one he has played every game he doesn't miss time so he will be a live guy uh that could have been because he was with Josh Allen, and Josh Allen was carrying the ball a lot, and they weren't running <laughs> yeah, it that much. taking a lot of the hits for him. But yeah, I, I think he'll be good in that uh, that Shanahanian system down there with Bobby Slowick calling the Listen, plays. Listen, at but... ADP, I do like Devin Singletary. Um, I, think I like Tank that... Bigsby, though, too. I Just, definitely If like we want a jag. If we want a jag. Uh, uh, I mean, we to do To go with Michael AJ. Carter. Yeah. Or you mean Miles Sanders? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, running back, running back is not the best correlation out there, but... No, it's not. It's not not correlation, right? I guess, is that well, thing? <laughs> we got Sammy fact, Laporte's. I think, it, I think it is actually negative correlation for on a, on a like single game basis. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I don't know if we have another Jag option at this point. I mean, there's the Trey Lance lottery if we want to go three QBs. <laughs> it's just I'm, he's I'm at QB sure. 24 now. That's crazy. Um, Dawson Knox, you know, he will be the guy we can snipe. I'm, I'm, I'm good with Devin Singletary if yeah. your initial feeling there. Okay. I uh, I will say that I think I'm about uh, in every little section. So we've got four sections right now of best ball uh, for us sickos who have been drafting in all the different windows <laughs> in the super flex and the pre-draft and all that yeah. stuff. Um, Devin Singletary is my most rostered player in every single competition. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I think I've taken him in 50% of drafts probably. Uh, so that's bad, but. It's also good because he will he will be an RB two many many times. And I think uh, he's, he's going to take more from um, Damien Pierce than any running back last year was going to do. He's clearly better than everyone else that they had behind Damien Pierce. I'm not saying it's going to be like a 50-50 split between them, but I think that it'll be more of a split than it was last year. And then he has the contingent mm-hmm. upside if anything happens to Damien Pierce. We're hoping CJ Stroud makes the offense at least competent. Right. Right. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, there's reasons to be excited at Devin Singletary and pick 163. Yeah, it's very late. It's very late, and I am very I'm worried about CJ Stroud because you know first game at Baltimore. That's that's so rough. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a rough game. Uh, and I heard yeah, and we don't know what these quarterbacks until we see him in the NFL. I think CJ Stroud's the kind of guy who's pretty poised and is gonna come in there and command the offense. That's kind of part of the reason why he's thought of highly is that he, he can come in and run an offense officially. Right away. Yeah. Right yeah, away. And so. Definitely better than Davis mills. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I think it was on the move the sticks podcast. They were talking about, they brought, maybe it was, I can't remember. Maybe it was somewhere else. Um, but they were saying how like CJ Stroud got over the boogeyman or maybe he didn't. I don't, watch a lot of college football but like he couldn't beat harbaugh at michigan when he was at ohio state and then his first game in the nfl is the other (laughs) harbaugh (laughs) it's just like (laughs) the boogeyman followed him or something so uh we'll see what happens there but uh we got seven wide receivers take the key right before our pick yeah thought he might fall to us again all right so back up do you have thoughts on this there's i say there's tajay right there i think it just makes sense at this point yeah, I think so. All right. I like that. Because we don't really want Chuba because we already have Miles. Although, this we got a little bit of a rookie mistake here. We weren't paying attention to bye weeks enough, and we have four running backs on week seven bye. Yeah, yeah that could be a problem. So I mean, Got a lot of week seven a, bye. Yeah, as I, was, I scroll, as I scroll down and see four more wide receivers. Um, well... We're taking a six running back on this team, I think, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I. What's your uh, preferred? I because I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of more vibes based, I guess, versus <laughs> going for a specific build, which is maybe why we ended up like with like this with the seven all the seven week seven buys. But uh, I yeah, kind of go with I more often than not, I think I end up with a two six eight two. It yeah, like. it's m- mostly that or. Uh, two five nine two uh, mm. with a little sprinkling of all different other combinations yeah uh, sometimes you get three tight draft. ends yeah um all right so week seven i think week seven i think there are six teams on by that week that's why we have so many tell you. yeah uh yes it's like... panthers Bengals, cowboys jets titans texans mm-hmm all right. Ooh, we got Miko Hardman coming up and Kenny Pickett. They're both on the board. <laughs> <laughs> we have no business taking Kenny Pickett on this team. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Don't we have a Seahawk? Don't they play in week 17? We don't have a Seahawk. We don't have a Seahawk. <laughs> uh, I like Kenny Gainwell, but he's more of a late season option. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to dive into it a little bit deeper, but does seem like these third down running backs for the very good teams really start to work into their team's plans in the second half of the season. You get the Jarek McKinnon the push rush running back. 
Yeah, and I think just in the uh, the, it's the teams getting ready for postseason play when they know they're going to get blitzed a lot more, and or you know they're going to see unique looks, or they're going to have to dump it off probably. Um, Back up here. Yeah, I don't know. I Mm. I don't mind Kenny Gainwell here actually. You think he'll be good in week seven? (laughs) (laughs) Well, all right. Yeah, um, I think it's a good bet with uh, Shad Penny and um, DeAndre Swift too. For the things I mean, you mentioned, you know, he's a player who I would expect to play the whole season and you know be more involved later in the season, kind of like mm-hmm. you were saying, which I think is important for this team because it is a team that rosters Miles Sanders, James Conner, you know, mm-hmm. where I'm a little bit worried about the end of the season for them. I agree. Even Tony Pollard, to be honest. I mean, if he gets, if he is RB one, like 15, 20 touches a game, then I think his opportunities will increase a little bit, but I think they do have like a cap on how much they're willing to give him in in any given game. Um, Yeah. Not so much where they're like, we never cross 18 opportunities or 18 touches or something like that. But I think that they like, have a general kind of area where they don't really want him to get past in any given game. Mm-hmm. I think they've kind of talked about that before because it starts to lose a little bit of his effectiveness at a certain point. Um, but it's still enough that you're plenty excited about Tony Pollard, especially because he's like one of, if not the most efficient running back we have. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, he'll be awesome. I mean, I think you're right. He'll be, he'll be a top 12 pick by the end of the summer. I think so too. Like right around Jonathan Taylor. Probably. Probably. Yeah, I, th- I think he's going to be yeah, right there. Uh, we got two sort picks of a... left. We know we're taking, we have to take another tight end. Um, we do. Um, you thinking think about any... Wide receiver? Okay. Um, what do you think do you about think like about a that? Marvin, you... like a Marvin Jones to stack with Jared Goff? I don't know. Um uh there's you know let's see what we got tight ends tyler conklin is like the i mean I, they used to play together but he's like the kirk cousins of tight ends he'll just be <laughs> tight end 12 he just will <laughs> i don't know how but he just will do you want to uh, make that our our second tight end uh sure what we don't really have any correlation there but that's all right i'm not too worried about that at this Maybe point. uh I think yeah, I think just because I had flashcards and I was like drilling the white week 17 into my brain, I'm just like correlation, correlation, correlation. It's all I mean, matters. it's definitely important. Yeah. We do already have some though. Yeah. So like correlating our backup tight end isn't the most important thing to me. I think Tyler Conkins fine is the old reliable behind Travis Kelsey, who he's not going to give us dead weeks, at least if something happens to Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Travis Kelsey goes down, we're, this is probably a dead team anyways. Yeah. So it's just <laughs> the price you pay, but you know, when a first round pick goes down, that's usually what happens, especially when if at tight end, because you don't plan on backing him up really. Cause you need him to do well. Uh, Are we committed to uh, confidence consistent? So, okay. So what was our first, Wide receiver. Was it T Higgins? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So in um in week seven there, we've just it's gonna be Drake London, Michael Pittman, and Marquise Brown. So are we gonna go wide receiver here, you think? I think with we this got last pick. You wanna just t- toggle on to that uh just that square just so we can yeah. see. All right, who's jumping out? <laughs> <laughs> uh Palmer doesn't really do anything for me. Woods does definitely doesn't do anything for me. I don't want another Houston wide receiver. So no Nathaniel Dell. Richie James, week 17. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> uh, it's not the worst. Paris um, Campbell sticks out a little bit for me because I think there's a chance he's the best wide receiver for the Giants if he stays yeah. healthy. What do you think about... Um, so one of the things I've been thinking about as far as end of the season, we know that like week 17, week 18, a lot of the teams who 
you know, they want to get their rookies more reps. When I was looking into the target data and just like reception data of the past couple of seasons, you see a lot of the younger guys mm-hmm. get their, their best weeks in like week 17, week 18. Yeah, Obviously we don't care are... about 18, but yeah, it's uh they really just kind of ramp up. So I just wanted to know how you feel about Cedric Tillman. <laughs> um, I've definitely taken a decent amount of last round Cedric Tillman. Yeah, I would think so. I, I would think this is kind of where people kind of they go with the guys that they're feeling. Maybe they go with their I think. I think he's probably more of a succession plan for DPJ because mm-hmm. um, they probably are going to do the same thing for the Browns. But he could also just uh, be good. And could be demand some playing time over DPJ. Is there anybody below this list that you like, or do we want to pick one from one of these guys? I don't think so. I think it's between, well, actually, Paris Campbell went. So I think I would say Tillman or James, and Tillman has the upside. So, okay. Yeah. I'll well, there's a decision for us. Okay. So we've got our team. We're starting we off at QB with Dak Prescott and Jared Goff, which. I think after struggling to try and find one that went with our wide receivers, ending up with those two at the picks we did is is fine. I still yeah. feel good about that. I think Running they back both have top five upside, you know? Yes. I th- Goff maybe not so much, but I think that in the right world, uh, if he has like the touchdown percentage spike, mm-hmm. uh, it'd have to be like the Matthew Stafford season from like two years ago. Where he threw or even like, Gino last year. Touchdowns. Yeah. Gino was top five, so... Yeah, in some formats, but yeah. Sorry to step on that. No, no, you're good. Uh, running back, we got Tony Pollard, Miles Sanders, James Conner, Devin Singletary, Tajay Spears, Kenneth Gainwell. Outside of the four <laughs> week seven bye week uh, players, I like the group based on where we got them. Hey, we're going to be really good those other 17 weeks, 16 weeks. So, yeah, because we're going to make the final round. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. Um, the wide receiver, we've got T. Higgins, Drake London, Michael Pittman, Marquise Brown, Tyler Boyd, Michael Gallup, Nico Collins, Cedric Tillman. I like that group. Mm-hmm. A lot of big boys, a lot of, a lot of tallies there. A lot of traditional <laughs> yeah. well, and Marquise Brown receivers. The, yeah. We had to balance it out. <laughs> go with the smallest. And, uh, guy. finishing up with Travis Kelsey and Tyler Conklin. It always feels good though. Like when you go through your draft and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is looking all right. And then you go, oh, yeah, that's right. I have for Travis Kelsey too. Yes, it's it's great to get to the bottom and see that Kelsey or Mark Andrews or whoever, yeah. if you if you did get that elite elite tight end who's going to carry you and win you weeks just straight up, just because of the positional advantage. Um, yeah, we did uh, manage to get the Dallas stack, although probably not the ideal way of doing it with Michael Gallup being part of it. And we've got some week seventeen correlation going on through here. So all in all, I think solid draft. Yeah, man. You I'll feeling like good it. about it? Yeah, it, it's one of those where it's, uh, I think, like, okay, it's it's sort of a, the problem because it's still best ball, still fairly new, a couple of years uh, in here. It's only best ball mania four. So, like, how would you feel about this as a redraft team? It's an interesting question. Because to I, me, it's just like, I don't I, don't I think know. I feel better as a redraft team because the yeah. week seven by we could like play around with that true know? but yeah, that's really I, the only reason yeah I, I just think with this one uh redraft I, I think i'd be a little bit worried um at the start of the season with the wide receivers just because we got a little bit of uncertainty there with sure you know chase chase could be the guy couple, most of those weeks and then anthony richardson could be you know, 14 for 30 passing or something yeah. like that. So it might take yeah. a bit, but I mean, the, the, yeah, the wide receivers we took to rely on, there's some home run swings or Drake strikeouts kind of happening a little bit here, you know, like Drake London, we really like the talent wide receiver. One for his team should have a very high target share. What's the passing offense look like? What is Desmond Ritter? Like Michael Pittman again, wide receiver one expect a huge target share. What's Anthony Richardson like? Marquise yeah. Brown, is DeAndre Hopkins moving on or not? I mean, if he's still there, that's a problem for drafting Marquise Brown. Colt Everything McCoy, was pointing baby. to him being gone until very recently. Uh, yeah. That's an odd story, honestly. But 
It's either going to be Colt McCoy or who's the rookie? Clayton Toon. Clayton yeah. Toon to Marquise Brown. Hollywood Toons. Let's go. Baby. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's just the script writes itself right there. That was it perfect. It does. <laughs> well, on that note, uh, Brad, thanks very much for coming on and drafting this team with me. I had a lot of fun. But before we got get out of here, uh, do you have anything you want to promote? Sure. Um, yeah, I would like to promote bandit.football, my website that I launched. Um, and I've just started a podcast and a show. I'm going to, I try to call it a show because like this, I want to have a video component, a YouTube component someday, but just getting things started there. Um, as far as, you know, launching a couple of tiers, it's, it's sort of a Patreon y sort of thing. It's powered by ghost.io, which is, creepy sounding a little spooky but it's a it's a good platform it's it's similar to patreon where you can support with a couple of tiers there um so if you want to check that out it's at bandit.football and then other than that wyatt said that i could promote anything within reason so i'm trying to think what would be unreasonable <laughs> so i can say that before we get out of here and he has to rush us off the show i want to promote promote restaurant t-shirts <laughs> restaurant t-shirts go to your you know you go to your favorite restaurants your local restaurants they got some merch sometimes buy their shirts nobody's buying those they're cool they're cool shirts you, you wear that around it's a nice little swaggy thing that's a little different uh yeah and wyatt i always love to bring this up chef wyatt i'm sure i mean i'm not sure his uh fine dining restaurants had merch but maybe some <laughs> maybe some of his restaurants he if, worked if i have yeah. one one day i will have merch just for you Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I am a big proponent. More merch, the better. So restaurant t-shirts, go buy, go support your local restaurants. All right. Well, for me, you can find me on Twitter at YP underscore FF. You can find JWB on Twitter at JWB underscore FF and all the content at JWB fancy football.com. While you're here, like subscribe, follow. If you're listening to this on one of your streaming platforms, why don't you pause this right now, head over to YouTube, hit the subscribe button. And in the description of this video, you can find the links to our Discord and our Patreon, which are one, two of the best ways you can possibly have to, of supporting us if you enjoy any of the content we do. There's lots of cool features in both of those to help you win your fancy leagues. We'll see you next time.